We have tested infill, we have tested infill at orientation, we have tested wall thickness, but today we're actually gonna test different materials to see how strong they are when you try to crush them. But before that, do go check out the Kickstarter. We're working to get in some extra equipment to really formalize these tests so that we can give you guys better data. So do please check out the Kickstarter for that and support us if you can. But on with the show. So we're gonna be testing five materials today. They are some of the most common materials used in 3D printing. PLA, PETG, ABS, TPU, and PA6 nylon, which are items that you can generally find on Amazon. And a number of the strength characteristics of these will probably be a little bit surprising if you haven't worked with a lot of these materials before. So let's go ahead and dive right into the tests. We start off with PLA, easily the most common 3D printing material known for its affordability and its ease of printing. It is a very brittle material, so we expect it to kind of fail dramatically. And as it compresses, bang, there we go. A nice explosion at the end. Yes, PLA is very brittle, but ultimately it could take a full motorcycle on top of it with 530 pounds or 2300 newtons. Moving on to PETG, another common one. A lot more durable than PLA, PETG should be fairly strengthful in this context, but since it is compression, it might not be quite as stiff. PETG is a reasonably affordable and functional material. We see good compression there, good compression coming along, but there we are, we've got a good failure. Less dramatic than the PLA. At 485 pounds of force, basically a small brand piano, Coming up on ABS now, less commonly used. It is an older type of material in 3D printing, but it is commonly used inside of injection molding, so it's a good comparison. You have a failure early on with the delamination from the wall because it is a softer material than items like PLA, so compression it won't be as strong, but it is very durable and often used for outdoor applications due to its durability. Ultimately, it could take 472 pounds of force or 2100 newtons, basically a professional pool table. Now coming up on TPU, we don't expect this one to be a high strength contender, but it is good to know how it performs. TPU is basically just a thermoplastic urethane, a rubber, and you can see even as it compresses there, there's really no failure at all. It did peak out until the walls finally buckled, and now we're basically just compressing a wad of plastic, so it doesn't really count as a full strength. But what is most interesting is even though it's highly compressed and basically a ruined part right there, as soon as you relieve the force, it almost returns completely to the shape that it was before, with a little bit of deformation on the sides, but it's an exceptionally durable material. Before it buckled, it had 47 pounds on top of it, basically a small three-year-old or a car tire. Now onto nylon, known for its durability and resistance to environmental factors. It is a softer material, so it won't last super long. We can see it's already had a failure of the cross-hatching on the inside. This is kind of to be expected. It's not as stiff or rigid as many of the other materials like ABS or PETG, but it sits between TPU and those types of materials as far as strength goes. You can see that failure comes up right there, and then once those lines go, the rest of it buckles along with it, but ultimately it failed at 200 pounds, basically a washing machine, or 844 newtons. Ultimately, PLA was the strongest in compression. It is one of the stiffest materials, so that's to be expected. And then coming down from PETG to ABS, sitting at about the same level. And then of course, TPU is super soft and nylon sits in between as another one of the fairly flexible and durable type of materials. So there were probably a number of surprises in that batch of tests. A lot of people probably did not expect PLA to be that strong and probably did not expect nylon to be that weak but let's break it down a little bit. Now, PLA is an exceptionally rigid and stiff material. It has a high compressive modulus, essentially. So even though it's generally considered kind of a low grade material because it is affordable and easy to print with, it's exceptionally stiff, which means that it's also exceptionally scratch resistant and just very tough in compressive type loads. So if you're making something that's a brick or block, PLA is a very good and performant material so long as its other material characteristics like low heat tolerance are also viable. But let's look at nylon just a little bit here too. The nylon is a lot weaker than many people anticipate, but you have to remember that nylon is really just one step above TPU. It's very often used for flexible type parts like the hinges and that kind of thing but it's known for its durability. When it's used in like machined parts and that kind of thing, it's known for its chemical resistance, its ability to take all kinds of beatings and temperature resistance and that kind of stuff and not be too worse for wear or having catastrophic failure. It's durable. Nylon is exceptionally durable. But then you have PETG and ABS, which are two sides of the same coin. They're both kind of semi-performance materials, which is why they're very often used in traditional manufacturing for making water bottles or gadgets, widgets, and toys and that kind of thing. 
So they're both kind of middle ground materials that are low cost, but have good material properties kind of in general. And then if you look at TPU, of course, TPU is not gonna be very strong in these tests, it's rubber but it does show why it's so useful for things like insoles and flexible padding and that kind of thing, because it can take a huge amount of deformation and be no worse for wear. TPU is the most durable because you can't really break it if you twist and pull and crush on it a lot. It can only fail through long exposure of extreme fatigue, but it's an exceptionally durable material otherwise. So hopefully these tests gave you some insight as to how the different types of 3D printing materials behave in a compressive situation. Uh, we wanna do more of these videos. So again, we'd like you to invite you to check out the Kickstarter where we're working to get some more machinery in to really formalize these tests and get really good data out for the 3D printing community about how these materials behave as they are, as they're manufactured by the individual filament makers. And once they're printed, what do they do? That is what we want to do with that Kickstarter and build out more videos like this. So we hope you'll help us out. Have a great day, everybody.